Here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder, local realtor here in Ottawa with Sutton Group Ottawa. And I'm here today with Sophie El Halawani with Cafe Cristal. Yeah. It's a fantastic coffee shop that we have. Coffee shop, brunch, the whole works. It's a delight. It's on Strandherd. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is just would like to kind of introduce you here, Sophie, and just kind of tell us about yourself. Tell us about your background. We'll dig into Cafe Cristal very shortly. Sure. I'm Sophie, as, uh, as you have mentioned. I have been here in Ottawa for almost 20 years right now. When I came, I actually started working in admis- very administrative role. Then I switched to nonprofit organization, working on uh, like more social work rules, helping people with disability, finding work and finding jobs. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, I felt maybe it's time to do something for myself, something as our own business. So I was looking for idea, different type of business I could do. And I remembered in our family history, actually, coffee was in the business. And people like my grandfather used to own a huge coffee shop in Yava, our home country. And uh, so just uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. folks that don't know where Yaffa is, it's a well, city in, in uh, Palestine, in right Palestine. on the coast. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I was like, OK, what about if I bring the family history back? And this is how it was the birth of the idea of the Cafe Cristal, because I love coffee and uh, I wanted to do something social. Because if I transfer my skills from my work and social work rules and from very different type of management administrative, I felt this is, would be the nice combination when I can have both social and management skills. Yeah. And, and if there's one birth. thing that Palestinians excel at is being super social. Yeah. And super around food. Exactly. So. Exactly. And that's actually very interesting because when I actually started at the beginning, I was looking only for coffee, coffee and sweet. So it was completely different concept mm-hmm. from what I have right now. The business um, evolved throughout time. And that based on how is my understanding of the industry, it changed. And of course, when we had the big change with COVID, the full concept for the business evolved it become heavily focused in food so i transferred from a cafe or coffee shop to a bistro where i serve actually some light meals like we serve not only the sweet grapes now we serve savory crepes we serve pasta sandwiches so our menu changed in a way to satisfy all the family members so whoever wants something will find it yeah and i just want to kind of take folks back to the inception of the idea so that was back when exactly when did you start 20 so the first time i thought that it's time for me to do a business was 2013 2013. and then i was thinking at the beginning doing a fitness center because my brother he was so focused on this and i was like okay i have with my social work what if we develop a program that can help people who's looking forward to lose weight, but we also take care of the emotional part of the journey? Mm-hmm. But I, it just didn't work. Something was still missing, so yeah. I didn't feel it. In 2015, I start looking at like, no, I want actually the coffee shop. I feel like the idea is there. I feel the passion is there. And I love food. I really love food. So I was like, okay, let's do something different. And I didn't want to do regular cafe at the time. That concept of a coffee shop that's mixed between a cafe and a restaurant wasn't there. Everyone was heavily focused on the fast grab and go coffee shop, Starbucks style, which is you will go with your laptop very like in a very short time or you will grab your coffee and go in downtown. But to sit and socialize, that concept wasn't there. Yeah. So I had so much difficulties at the beginning to find a location because people didn't understand exactly what is a community cafe. And that's exactly what was the concept. And that's why the business have been developed with that design, the homey, the couches, people. It's the idea that people will sit and talk. It's a social place. Yeah. And, and if, if anyone didn't see it, I'd invite you to just go to Cafe Cristal website, take a look and actually even better, take a trip down there and, and, and check it out. Yeah. I mean, you'll be surprised of how homey and cozy and uh, on a day like today, for example, rainy day, it's yeah. a perfect place to be. Exactly. And the interesting thing, so when, when, I, when I did the design, the idea was a community cafe, but honestly, I everyone is there. Mm-hmm. Business people do meeting there. I had like when we are so close to where is Costco and Barhaven area. And when they were doing their interviews to open, all the interview happened in the cafe. Yeah. 
Nice. So it's like it's business people find their I like find their place there. Yeah. People like who want just to socialize, mothers, all like uh, senior people, even like younger generation. Yeah. Even even networking events. Even networking uh, was, events. Yeah, networking. That's exactly. Speaking of which, we actually hosted a networking yeah. events. Uh, mm -hmm. Must have been like almost three, three weeks, weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. And it was an absolute hit. Yes. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, networking event. Everybody loved it. Everyone Thank was you. making so many gestures about the food, how amazing it was, <laughs> the hospitality that you guys have. So how did it come to you deciding on the location and then what to serve? Okay, let me tell you the story for the location. I had like a huge difficulty finding a location. And why is that? Because people didn't you understand didn't have that. Me as an agent. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't that. know you. Like that's hundred percent true. <laughs> people had difficulty to understand the concept. Like if you are in Toronto, Toronto have more like high end coffee shops. Yeah. People have that vibe is already there. In Ottawa, we were more focused on the second wave. Mm -hmm. So if I don't know if you're familiar, we how is the coffee industry started? We have the first wave. We have the second wave, which is the chain, which is all these big franchise. We have Starbucks. We have here. We have Second Cup. We, at the time, we had Bridgehead. So everyone want that concept, yeah. the big chain, because yeah. they know they are safe. But then the third wave came. I was one of the people who actually started the third wave here in Ottawa. We had a few small coffee shops, but it's more like hippie styles and different. That type that high end that sitting area the concept wasn't there yeah so and, and the reason why i just want to mention something it's the difficulty from a real estate perspective mm -hmm. the difficulty in doing something that's brand new is that you're faced with the landlords yes. especially if you're looking at a lease you're yeah. faced with the landlords that have no idea what you're trying exactly to bring up to the table mm -hmm. and it, it is kind of our job like as, as realtors to like sit there with you and go Show me the business plan. Tell me a little bit more about this. Give me hard numbers on the case study that you've done. Give me a little bit more about uh, the concept itself. And then I have to articulate it to the yeah. landlords in a way that it makes absolute sense. Okay, well, this is going to be easy for us to go forward. The reason being is because you mentioned the second wave. Mm -hmm. The second wave for, you know, any, any sort of landlord looking at commercial real estate is a blessing. Because for them, it's like, I know that this is already a proven mm -hmm. concept. Yeah. It's been there for a while. It's going to be one of those stores that are going to be an anchor for me in my mm -hmm. plaza. So yeah, it's, an, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. You guys got the concept. You got everything. Show me a little bit more about the financials. Let's move forward. Yeah. But for something like this, it's not. It's a brand new concept that you're trying to bring. I mean, now it may be a little bit less, but no, back it's different. then, yeah. it's definitely a brand new concept. Yeah, that's you're absolutely right. You you actually articulate that 100% right. And that's exactly what I was facing. I When I was... Going, talking to landlords and explaining to them, they were like, I actually had people laughing at me. I was like, what are you talking about? This is not going to work here. Mm -hmm. No one is going to come. And no one actually thought that I would be actually doing this. Yeah. So I was going with like pictures for the design. Like, this is the design that I want to do. And like for coffee, people was like, this is not going to cover mm -hmm. the cost. Like, how is this is going to work? And so million questions I have been faced at. And at the end, and it happened like, by coincidence, my brother was like having haircut in a place. It turned out the guy beside him, he's the, he's the landlord for the place where I was right now. And he's actually used to be back in the days a restaurant's owner. So he understand he understand what, what it means to be an independent, yeah. to be passionate. And I believed in the concept. I knew that this, we need it in the city. First of all, there was none in the city at that time. And we need it. Like people just want to see it in reality to understand that actually can happen. And then I showed him the design. He was like, if you're going to do this, let's do it. And I got the location in one week after like looking for like almost six or seven months for location. Yeah, yeah. And I got it and I got in and, and then it happens. I started working on the location. And at the beginning, it was only coffee and sweets. That's what I wanted. But as I said, with my deep understanding on the of the coffee industry and where is the ticket value come from i started to see you know i need to involve more food item yeah in that and i started developing the menu okay so let's introduce the savory crepe and we started doing that we had like i think at the beginning just light sandwiches you know cafe sandwiches with covid my menu completely revamped. Like I expanded the menu a lot and that as a response for the event itself. And this is how I survived. I changed my whole menu. At the time, we noticed that 
the focus was the food. So I had to sell food. And we created items still using the same ingredients, but in a way to serve better taste. One thing that you've also kind of touched on, evolving to survive. I mean, that's yeah. something that's ingrained in us Palestinians since the, yes. <laughs> you know, the, the, the born. You're born to yeah. survive. Yeah. If you guys know any of the stories, you can always check it out. But the beauty about this and and what I like about it is like how you kind of pivoted and shifted to get your business to continue. At the end of the day, it's all about survival. It's all about like being able to, you know, put food on the table in one way or another. Yeah. Uh, You provided food so you can put food on your table. 100% true. How many times have you changed the menu since you started? So as I said, I think it's almost three fours. Now, I won't say I'm changing. I'm just adding the seasonal item because I felt at some point the stability is nice in a way, but it's boring. So it you is. need to have something exciting from time to time. Mm-hmm. But throughout the years, from my start to now, I would say like the major shift happened around four times, two after COVID and two before. And you mentioned something is very interesting. And I think it's my biggest lesson that I learned in business is you look at it as a survival, but I look at it from different perspective. One of those skills that I developed, and I think it's what actually made me stay in the business after COVID, <laughs> is being resourceful. Yeah. So what I learned, having a resource, like resources, is nice, but it doesn't actually keep you stay in the business yeah. it's being resourceful as a management that actually what's keep you surviving right. in the business and then being resourceful it goes to show again being able to find your own resources in the absence yeah of these resources exactly exactly it's one thing to be okay like i have you know this much in the bank i can rely on that for the next hard six or eight months until mm-hmm. i get going and it's the story of a lot of businesses that we've had d- through mm-hmm. covid and some of them unfortunately they're no longer there or hey what can i do to shift and adjust and then use whatever i've got today and kind of pigeonhole myself instead of pigeonhole myself and and where I'm at, expel myself to the next level by using those resources yeah. effectively in a exactly. way. Yeah, 100% true. And that's exactly what I felt like. That was my biggest business lesson and being and surviving and staying. It's not really about the resources. It's about how you deal with them, how you change them, how you manipulate them in a way that can keep you. And at the same time, without having losses. Mm-hmm. In what are some of the most memorable times for Cafe Cristal in the last, you know, I want to say like eight years now, nine years you've been in business? Nine years. Yeah, we have been in nine years. I think COVID area was, uh, or COVID time, I believe this is, was the most, the most I remember because it was all about shifting and it's very fast. And it's my biggest growth. At the beginning, I would say the memory is all focused on learning. Because I came from a completely different background. I came from administration and going to social work, doing to counseling and all these things. And then a huge difference in the type of how you manage a business. Like how you manage a business, going from nonprofit to profit-focused business and all these things. So my memory focused at that time on learning, 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 learning the business, learning, finding resources, finding supplier. What's in you? Going always attending conference. But COVID was actually the biggest challenge. It was, okay, you learn this, how you will implement it. Mm-hmm. How you can actually make something out of this. So it was like the real deal. Yeah. That's that's why I feel like COVID time was my biggest. If I have to refer to, and I, maybe I'm using the analogy wrong, but maybe it'll help some folks understand. I feel like for a lot of businesses, you know, doing business in normal times is like training. You know, it's like military training. Doing business in COVID times, is like you're in battle right now. Yes. You know, it's yeah. do or die. You got to get there. You got to, yeah. you know, and then that's kind of the biggest sort of lesson that I've learned throughout that is that this is the time where you are going to be digging deep, finding those resources in yourself because maybe they don't, they're not yeah. there. And yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are on the other end of it and learned a lot. And, and obviously the business is flourishing with Cafe Cristel being where it is. How do you find the location working for you? The location is very interesting. So at the beginning, um, when I was looking before because the idea it was was a community cafe i had to find a community it it's not like a downtown it will work amazing in downtown because of the traffic <coughs> but it's a community cafe where you want people to have that connection mm-hmm. with the location so 
Barhaven was perfect because it's all about community. It's like so much residential and so much people and and it satisfies everyone. I have the women and I have ladies in the morning and in the middle I have middle of the day I have business people. In the night people who was going for light dates uh, for like teenagers. So the location itself was perfect match for the concept. Yeah. And then you guys lucked out on that location 100% because again, nine years ago, that location was great. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the greatest, but it's it's okay. Yeah. Today, it's probably one of the best locations you can find because you've got about six other neighborhoods that are being built around in that yeah. area and it's still expanding. Expanding. And, you know, for someone that comes in again from a little bit of suburbs, like I would rather go to somewhere close for Mm -hmm. a date or a coffee or a business meeting Mm -hmm. than having to go to the local Starbucks and I can't find a a spot and I'm boycotting them right now. It's a different story, but, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you really lucked out on that location. And how do you feel about that decision that you made on the location? Um, I'm very satisfied. I will tell you something like one of my things in life, I do detailed research. So I did like every single research you can think of about Barhaven and the expansion of Barhaven as a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like uh, people, like who's in the community, what type of family in the community, the income in the community. I went through everything. Because I wanted to make sure like this is, will be the right fit for my concept. So um, I'm, I'm very satisfied. And I'm as you said, that expansion, it brings a lot of challenges because I'm pretty sure more and more competition will be now. I'm not the only one in the area, but that competition also bring the nice part in the business that makes you always you want to think you want to always do changes. It's a healthy competition. It's, exactly. it's uh, you know yeah, competition exactly. is very very healthy when it comes to survival of the business exactly. because it keeps you on your toes first of all, mm-hmm. and then two it gives you that lesson which you've been really good at as far as uh, adjusting and, and recalibrating they keep changing even my design like when i started at the beginning i didn't have like if if you go to the cafe there is the flower ceiling that wasn't there that actually added later on some of the chairs been added later on in this industry because the fast phase of a change and in like evolving from time to time, you always have to be running, changing, adding. There is competition or not. Even if you're not competing with your local, you're competing with the world. Now with that open social media, when people see, they will always come and compare what you have to what they are seeing because mm-hmm. it's all about social media. Everyone want to come and take that nice picture. So you have to be ready to have that picture set for them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have a very, very unique setup as well, too. Like you walk in the door, it's it's welcoming. It's yeah. right off the bat. You feel like, okay, I'm relaxed now. I can sit down and have a coffee with my client or have mm-hmm. a coffee with my friend. And I, you know, for, for the hour, hour and a half that I'm going to spend there, mm-hmm. I don't really have to worry about the service. Yeah. Because you guys have one of the most fabulous service I've, I've had really in the industry. It. Thank so. you, Fadi. To be honest, that's, that's maybe will bring us to the, to the idea of having a good team. Mm-hmm. In this industry, having a good management is essential. But even though you cannot do it by yourself, I learned that lesson. Like, as I said, my first two years was like all about learning. And I had one particular year when I had not that so good team. And I noticed the difference, like in my service, the shift in people responds, everything. But now I have built a, what's what I call uh, organizational culture. I understand more how to deal with my team yeah. to bring the best out of them. They have to be involved. They have to feel they belong. They are not your employee. They are kind of your partner yeah. because they deliver the service. They have to feel it to deliver it. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's not something that you can instill in them, but it's definitely yeah. something that you can foster. Exactly. In a way. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you you do have to kind of find that it's there first before you bring them on the team. Yeah. So I, I was watching this thing actually on, uh, I can't remember it was TikTok or whatever, like, you know, the one person that you could bring to the team sometimes could make or break the or team. Or break the team, 100 So it's kind of funny because there are like, you know, a bunch of people sitting on the fence. There's like maybe six or seven people sitting on the fence and then that one person that joined the fence and everybody fell, right? Yeah. So it just makes it, it goes to show like, look, it's the team members and the fabric of that team is really what makes or breaks the organization that you're in. Yeah. And I like how you kind of put it in, in such a way of organizational culture, culture right? Yeah. There is a course that I was, uh, when I was at the Carleton University, I'm dating myself now a little bit. It's called organizational behavior. Yeah. 
that was all about that. And it's a, it's a business course. And it talks about how you as an organization or you as the, you know, like the, the collective within the organization, how you can actually work together to be able to bring that goal to mind, yeah. which is carrying that conversation forward, bringing the, the business where it needs to be. Yeah, because let's be realistic. I can't be there 100%, 24 hours, seven days a mm -hmm. week. It's impossible. I will need to work on other stuff. I need to do my management paper. Correct. So who's going to take care of the place while I'm not there? Who's going to make sure that the same service is going to be delivered? Yeah. So your team, it's everything. They are, they need to be, in a way, they need to be kind of like your replacement. Exactly. And and then this is one of the mistakes that a lot of business owners make, and I, I kind of grinds my gears when I hear it, is that they don't hire somebody that they can see themselves into or see that this person can actually replace them. Or they look at it as a, it's a little bit sort of... A competition. Competition, exactly. Yeah, competition. Or the... Well, I don't want to be replaced. Well, you're never going to be replaced. It's your business at the end of the you day. Know, Fatty, the way I look at it is how do you, as a management, see yourself in a few years? Mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, I love Cafe Cristal. Cafe Cristal is Sophie. Like, a lot of, I have even heard that thing from so many people who see your spirit in the place. But my vision, since day one, then there will be more, not only one location. So how I will do that if I cannot leave the one location, exactly. I need if I need to expand, I have to build the business in a way when there are people, the people who I bring yeah. in, like honestly, in my plan right now, I know who's gonna if I Make move to my second it. location, yeah. who's gonna take care of this one. Exactly. That's how you have to build it. So it's you will feel it as a competition if all your goal, all your dream is to be here. Yeah. So that's your, yeah, you don't want anyone take your legacy. But if your legacy is bigger, you have to find who's going to come next. Mm -hmm. As uh, one of my mentors actually mentioned this a while back, is uh, always hire someone that's going to be completely replacing you. 100%. Because if you if you don't think that that day is coming, you're not growing. 100%, exactly. Because you will be, specifically that type of business, it's demanding. Yeah. It's demanding. It, it is something every <clears throat> second. And it's... All at this moment phase, like what's happening right now, what's going, what's going, what what do you need to do? All these kind of things. So you you will not be able to grow if you're so much stuck inside. Yeah. You have to find people to replace you. And it's also like goes to show like for example, like if you were to take a vacation, like how is that possible? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, if, yeah. if you're not able to rely on the folks or the team that you have put in place. Mm -hmm. How are you ever going to take a downtime so you can learn more and grow as a business more? Yeah. So you touched a little bit on the plans for Cafe Cristal. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the vision. Tell me a little bit more about that vision. So since day one, my idea was is I'm going to open a location and expand with the franchise model, mm -hmm. not myself. And I have my, my opinion about it. It's just because I feel what we were just talking about. I can't be here and here and here and here. And if I want to reach that expansion that I'm thinking of, which is for me, sky is the limit, to be honest. Yeah. I have to, like the best way would be the franchise because in the franchise rule, you one of the rules that you have to have someone always there, one of those a franchisee, it's their responsibility. So my interaction will be direct with them, not with their team. So that's why I felt franchising is the best way. Mm -hmm. But Franchising is not the only thing that I see for Cafe Crystal. I, I'm one of those people who believe the future will be also online. So how I will be existing in the online is through e-commerce. So we started building actually our e-commerce store so we can sell over our product. Like Because now we actually do have our coffee beans. We have our own tea. It's Cafe Cristal branded tea and coffee. So I want to expand in the space, I want to be present online. So e-commerce franchising is where we're going. That's mm -hmm. that's where I see our expansion. Because I 100% believe the future is online. It's going to take over like sooner or later. So you have to exist. You have to be there if you want to reach that level of expansion. And at the same time, as the physicality, I would like to expand in a franchise model. Yeah. So much to learn here. Really appreciate you uh, being on the show here, Sophie. And uh, for folks that are watching, thank you so much for uh, for watching us. You know, please 
go out and, and check out uh, Cafe Cristal in Barhaven. Fantastic spot. I've been there many times. I've been on many dates. I've been also on many networking events and amazing for client meetings. The atmosphere, the, you know, the way it is, it's just homey. The service and the food is delicious. It's actually part of the reasons why I have some of the weight. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like button and then subscribe as well so you can get that little bell icon. And then that way you can get more and more episodes about this and learn more about uh, businesses around the city and make Canada on the rocks one of your uh, channels. And thanks again for watching. Have a good day. Thanks again, Sophie. Thank you, Fadi. Thanks.